W E F U N K. We funk. Instead of you asking each other fun questions like, would you have seen it in the theaters or uh, how many sequels would you make? This time we're asking each other kind of the same question like last time. Uh, what cutie superpower would you have? <laughs> and on, I was going to say, fuck, marry, or kill from the cuties. <laughs> <laughs> What's, uh, we played it last week with the Kardashians. Right off the bat, I'm definitely marrying Angelica. <laughs> thug life. Stop Whoa, answering. thug Stop life. <laughs> Do 11-year-old French girls really say thug life? And I'm definitely killing the blonde girl. I'm going to leave out the last one. <laughs> that little one, dude. The, the blonde one. No, the one you were talking about. She's yeah, definitely yeah, getting yeah. killed. That little bulldog, dude. Yeah. That, thing, that, one's, that one was my favorite of the, uh, the cutie gang. That little psychopath. Uh, but I guess we're just going to ask each other if we think, was the controversy of this movie warranted? Uh, would you? Are you going to hashtag cancel Netflix because of it? Uh, <laughs> And, I, and honestly, would you, I guess, kind of we were talking earlier, but would, did the controversy of this movie kind of mire your expectations of it, your viewing of it, knowing that it was maybe justly or unjustly sold as a pedo movie? Uh, you know, would you have thought that on your own, just plainly yeah, watching for it? Sure. Uh, controversy behind it? Because it definitely, there is definitely a placebo effect in general. But uh, and, uh, I guess you want me to uh, go first here, kick yeah, it off. Yeah, go ahead. I yeah, mean, you go ahead. You go ahead. I'll give it guess... my uh, thoughts, and I just think we, you know, pretty much are going to be in line on this for the most part. But and I've kind of already be said yourself. it. <laughs> but I've kind of already said how I felt about it. For the most part, I feel in terms of like a two prong kind of thing, like the content of the movie is all super relevant and like important socially, you know, and culturally in terms of like sexualization of females and you know uh, like we said cyber being you know naive about the uh, internet and peer pressure in 2020 and like religious culture clashes and all that kind of stuff so it's great if like make a movie to provoke conversation about those issues or whatnot but i just you know feel that they made it very uncomfortable with the overly sexualized dancing scenes which they didn't really need to do to convey the the content of the movie like if you're just trying to confront these uncomfortable you know topics in your film they did all of that in a great way but then they just threw on these like overly sexual dance numbers that were really what anybody would complain about if it wasn't for those dance numbers there's really nothing to complain sure. about but given those dance numbers i can't really argue with somebody's complaining because they were fucking just insane and creepy you know what i mean so Hundred, I mean, a hundred percent agree with you, man. That you're right, and again, I said it earlier that like the actual like story of her family and like the estranged father coming back with his new bride found all that really interesting. I didn't know. I thought like the whole Muslim tradition of like the room you don't go into for, that's for the new bride or the preparing of the feast for the wedding. All that was really interesting. And then again, just like the clothing, the long takes. Even if it was implied that we are like. I mean, the outfits alone are one thing. Like, there's literally, like, butt cheeks hanging out of these fucking, like, little hot yeah, pants. Yeah. That it's fucking very opening. But that the dance numbers are so long. Like, again, I keep referring back to and that whole, very like, graphic, dude. There-ups like, close close of vaginas and stuff like that. Cra- it's just sure, crazy, man. Like, you know, I and that really, really that. takes away from the fact because, and I get the fact that they're you're 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 trying to make from like the filmmaker's benefit. You're making a movie about a taboo subject matter, so to try to convey that message and hammer it home, you're doing it in a taboo way, and like you're making it uncomfortable to watch. And it's supposed 100%. to be uncomfortable subject matter, so I get that or whatnot. But it's already it's uncomfortable just having them do. slutting yeah. around, like you said. Like we don't need to see. It just feels like they almost added that stuff to make sure that it got controversy you know what i mean it's like they just didn't need those extra like the stair the staircase scene like they did a great job confronting and even just like you said about the the muslim scenes i really thought that they did a great job of just like what it would be like to grow up as a girl an 11 year old girl in 2020 you know what i mean like i know what it was like to grow up as an 11 year old boy in the 90s was was really tough and as a girl in the 90s really tough in 2020 must be a lot worse you know what i mean so just like the peer pressure that a girl like for sure like just like her, country. you know, just thinking about somebody coming to France and wanting to connect with the other cool kids or whatnot. Like that was a really relatable, cool, you know, coming of age movie 
but then it just got ruined with these creepy dance scenes. You know what I mean? So, so, right. And just some of the subject matter that they were talking about, like, you know, there was, I have written down, there was like a piss and a rape scene. Oh, they piss in your mouth and that's how you get pregnant. No, oh, that is <laughs> yeah, rape. Yeah. Like all that shit is like, what are we watching here? But I thought oh, that was like was established like, their naive, like their, you know, how naive they were as kids. Like they're trying to like be adults, other... but they don't know what it is. Like we remember what that was like when we didn't know how sex worked and you're trying to figure it out like they're still just trying to they're figure still. it out but they're like acting like they're full adults you know what i mean they're not letting themselves be kids and not know what sex is you know what i mean because yeah, like the other... world is so sexualized and that's like a real taboo subject that and i, I feel there's... like much like race like racism and what we're going on in america anyway right now with the whole racial thing but sexuality like is a taboo subject that's not comfortable to talk about but really important and has like a major impact on the future of America and on kids and on, you know what I mean? Like there are huge, real relevant social impacts that come from like the taboo nature of sexuality. So to like make a movie to talk to your 11 year old about that. But like you said, I don't think this is a movie for an 11 year old. Yeah, you I wouldn't know, it's like any 11 year old to watch. It reminds me, I mean, kind of, there's this movie and I'm right now I'm drawing a blank on the actor's name, but there's this movie called 13. That was like an American movie. And that movie is done well. It's about like the 13 year old girl, like trying to like had her sexual awakening and she's kind of bad and hanging out with the bad crew. It's the girl from uh, Westworld, the uh, uh, Dolores. Is okay. 13 year old. And uh, it's fucking done very well. There is no cutaway twerking. Dancing yeah. Yeah. Fucking- sex scenes in it for sure and as far as i guess because you pretty much hit the nail on the head with all that and as far as the question goes of am i canceling netflix for this no i think they got a bad rap because there is the 85 percent critic review versus the 14 percent audience review but did they fuck up by that being their first movie poster absolutely they did like there were so many other still shots of yeah, it. this yeah. would have been a picture of the fucking four girls smiling at the camera no and i think that I the, heard the about pic- this movie for sure. And then just to double down on it, like... I think the movie poster does happened. go to speak a lot to those dance scenes. Like, they're trying, I think, to make a story out of it. And they're trying to point it out. Like, they tried to sexualize the movie. They didn't just make yeah. the Muslim family and the teenage angst movie like they could have. And all they needed to do to make that was just edit out those dance scenes. You know what I mean? But I think we, you as well brought up a really good movie. point. What's up? You can even keep it in the movie that they are in a little dance troupe. You know what I mean? And like want to yeah, emulate yeah. The no, but that, like, without going so for like, sure over sexualizing the dance scenes. But like I'll even crazy. give you one over sexualized dance. Okay, good call. Like five of them for sure. Fucking five of them in the movie. One that establishes it, it enough. Like, the you know staircase I mean? scene was really uncomfortable, and the fucking I don't know how I forgot about it. Besides mentioning it earlier, but the laser tag scene was the most uncomfortable thing in the fucking world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I felt the them learning how to torque montage, which is like that was like straight up on the ass of fucking eleven. Like it was uncomfortable, but as well though, you brought up a great point in terms of the placebo effect and me and you both watching this movie with our finger on the per- I was expecting like I said especially Angelica I thought she was going to get sexually abused during the movie or something like that like I thought there was going to be a more dark turn at some point and there really never was it was just them no, in the outfits least, and dancing you know what I mean sure. but uh, uh, in terms of it, so if I didn't watch it knowing that it was controversial I would have fucking first of all I wouldn't have ever made it through I would have watched it 20 minutes and fucking put something else on you know <laughs> I mean, but I would have uh, watched it and I would have been like, wow, they're taking things too far. But doesn't every generation always think that the younger generation is pushing it too far? But I feel that eventually they will go too far. And I feel that this generation, if this is like a real microcosm of what it's like, it might be time to fucking peel back. Cuties is coming pretty close. And you're right. Like, never, if it wasn't for the controversy, never in a million years would we have watched this, save it for about like a legitimate Brad Pitt what's in the box poll. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh, fuck. Like, looks like we're watching this movie Cuties. Yeah. And yeah. then afterwards, we would have been like, you know, what the fuck did we just watch? That's a good call, dude. If we watched it in the random Brad Pitt What's in the Box mm-hmm. thing, 
You know what I mean? It would have definitely been a major talking point about how uncomfortable it was to watch. But I don't think me or you would have ever thought in a million years that it would have been worthy of, like, a major firestorm like what have happened. Would have even called it, like, XOXO for kids? Who knows? (laughs) Who knows? I tell you what, though. Either way, Chris Dahlia would have loved to have been a part of this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Great call. Uh, thank you, thank you. So uh, I guess that's our uh, kitschy questions then, which leaves us only uh, one more thing to do, and that's to give you our uh, official review of this movie. And uh, I guess I'll go first. Uh, kind of stealing from Liam, I have my own four-point system now. I've been meaning to change it every week to apply for the movie, but my boy Arnold keeps making sense for every movie. Seeing it. <laughs> Of uh, foreign film, who I mean, yeah, is our go-to foreign film review? Who, uh, but our favorite Austrian is to uh, give us uh, my review to catch you guys all up. If I uh, really, really hated this movie, thought it was the worst thing in the world, much like Project Power, I give it the Arnold Schwarzenegger scream montage. <laughs> I only if I didn't like the movie, but I didn't absolutely hate it. But I didn't like it or love it. It was a uh, it was a bad movie, but hey, at least it's not a tumor. It's not a tumor. If I uh, liked the movie uh, and enjoyed it, you know what? I'm going to much like Arnold says in The Predator, stick around. Yeah. Stick around. And <laughs> if I absolutely love the film. It's so good. I have to watch it more than once. That's right. I'll be back. I'll be back. So, I'll be uh, back. For this the one, epic Arnold quote for an for epic one, Arnold I'm... review. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And for again, one, as we I'm... pointed out last week, if Devin gives it an I'll be back, we know there's this, <laughs> I'm never doing a show with him again if, if he gets an I'll be back. So, I'm, uh, I'm on two state of minds here. I'm in between two things. I really want to give it – I don't know what to do. Because like we said earlier, I did enjoy the some of the parts of the movie, like the whole, and again, the door, the room at the end of the hall, and the whole Muslim upbringing. That part really got to me. But just knowing what was around the corner every time, and just, I think, I don't know, like you said, maybe I'm getting too old, but just really the over-sexualization of it. And even the scene where she, like, is implied she's going to bang her cousin to get the phone back. Like, it was just all yeah, of it was... That was- all of it was just way too much uh my suggestion would be age it up a little bit instead of a movie about 11 year olds this movie easily could have been done about a 16 year old girl who just fucking moved from senegal to paris who uh could easily have been played by an 18 year old and then you could have done the same fucking exact yeah, thing but then it's not like an uncomfortable movie the whole point was to like raise I, yeah, the I uncomfortable know. like they're trying to cross a taboo because 11 year old girls are dealing with this you know what i mean well it's... they fucking nailed it to me you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. maybe it's not a pedo movie but like i said earlier i guarantee you there's some pedophile out there calling his pedophile friend and being like look bob you gotta check <laughs> yeah. out fucking cuties on netflix i mean there's no doubt I pedos can't... would enjoy it there's no i doubt. can't believe that fucking this the movie this is a script i wrote 10 years ago they're fucking they made my movie <laughs> they ripped me off <laughs> Uh, and for that matter alone and again just because like there wasn't one but like 11 fucking like full-on choreographed uncomfortable dance scenes upskirt and fucking it's getting i'm sorry to do it i'm giving it the arnold screen oh interesting Two weeks in a row, the Arnold montage screen. And really, just because, too, the parts I did enjoy about it, there was just the parts where another dance number would come up and all four of these little girls are shaking their asses again. That my body would literally clench, and I would just be like, fuck, I hate this so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hate it. It was like being on like a scary ride at like the yeah, carnival yeah. we were talking about. 
I fucking hated it. I feel like I was at Action Park where like I knew that like <laughs> something terrible was about to happen to me any time. Yeah, I fucking, no, for sure. It was so clenched. And, I mean, the, and for that the... minute, reason alone, too, the hour and 26 minutes seemed like three hours, dude. I couldn't <laughs> wait for this fucking movie to I be done. I will definitely dude. give you that much, as I think I might have even already said, but much like Project Power flew by. This one, I made it as long as I could, to, you know, hanging on to as much interest as I possibly could have, and I checked how much time was left, and it was like 45 minutes into the movie. I was like, Jesus Christ, this is going to be a long fucking, it's going to be a long 40 minutes to go. But uh, I'm actually going to, ride your back here and steal okay. a moment from Barnes as I teased last week and luckily I get to execute my ultimate plan but I uh, I'm actually <laughs> sticking with uh, uh, stealing from Devin's Arnold quote and giving it uh, it's not a Tuma it's not a Tuma <laughs> so I'm giving it it's not a tumor of course my audio scale I would have had to either give it a hell yeah or a hated it okay and in terms definitely can't give it a hell yeah or for you you can't give it a stick around you know what I mean yeah, but I feel yeah. like it's not a tumor just in terms of uh, uh, watching it exclusively in the context of a controversial movie that is supposed to be this big firestorm of inappropriate shit and then mm. not feeling like it was that at all and feeling like there was a lot of social relevancy and there was a lot of you know positive film stuff to, going on i can't say that it was a bad movie you know that being said it's totally not a movie for me that i've got no business really watching so it was you know fucking creepy and i do like we talked about think that the uh they tried to make those scenes sexual and taboo to make the movie taboo because the subject matter was taboo so i feel like you know i'm just a pawn in this fucking scheme that's being forced yeah. to watch a fucking 11 year old girl being a pro for the filmmakers fucking benefit you know what i mean so sure uh, sure you know but but ultimately speaking though i thought it was an interesting good movie in terms of you know telling the story of the 11 year old girls the muslim family and all that like there was enough positive things going for it that i can't say that it was a bad movie however not super controversial definitely not for me not a good movie but not the tumor yeah. It's not a tumor. And I can think, too, I'm just kind of thinking about it. I think the real question of the answer, too, that we keep asking those, like, who the fuck is this movie for? Like, who's sitting down watching this movie? Is, uh, it hasn't happened yet. I think in maybe, like, 10, 15 years, when this person's old enough, you know, with the whole technology of it, the person this movie's for isn't there yet. I think in 10, 15 years, some, like, girl from Senegal that lives in Paris was like, oh, wow, this is exactly what my upbringing was like. Yeah. With the iPhones you know, and to everything. To be perfectly honest, dude, I think but... that this, if I had an 11 year old daughter, I would fucking watch this movie with her and then, like, use it as a conversation piece to talk about. This is, like, real life stuff that 11 year old girls really are dealing with, man. Like, 12 year old girls are sending Ish. naked vi uh, videos to their boyfriends and shit nah, like that. Too young, dude. I still say too young. Dude, 12 year old, that's like 7th or 8th grade, man. That's, like, when you start doing, doing that. Well, we didn't have phones and stuff, but we were, you know, things progress in that way you were probably only a couple of years from doing that and if you get a couple years more mature every every so often but it is like a, a, a and even if it is a couple years too young if you're concerned about your 13 year old daughter doing that it's a good time to have that conversation when you're an 11 year old and in terms of all of the sexy creepy dance numbers this is fucking like I brought up earlier dude with honey boo boo and shit like there's a whole like all these cheerleaders you're telling me that that's much worse than a lot yeah, of shit yeah. that goes on and like fucking like if you're the father of of a fucking uh, of a girl you're gonna grow up having to see some fucking creepy shit dude you know what I oh, mean? Like, not gymnastics kid. cheerleaders like there's of course this is way more sexualized but it's just like you have to be a level of maturity about how to deal with sexuality with your daughter luckily me and you fucking are too immature to have children so we don't have to worry about it yeah. but you know what i mean like it is like an important all of this stuff i feel is super important to talk to a young girl about and i think it'd be really interesting to talk to a, a girl about this you know what i mean i'd love to hear from some of our female geeks and how what they felt about it compared to their life as an 11 year old in whatever generation they grew up in whether it be 80s 90s fucking 2000s today you know what i mean like growing up as a teenager is tough man and there's it's true you know, so and all those emails to, from our the girl geeks out here will be answered just by liam because i don't want to fucking talk about this movie anymore. <laughs>
I've uh, I've queued it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I'm gonna forward them all to Chris Hansen. <laughs> Let him fucking sort out the mess. But <laughs> so uh, that's the official uh, official review of uh, of uh, cuties. Uh, Liam gives it a stick around. I give it a. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm giving it a not a puma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sticking around, goddammit, it! All right, I'm, uh, I'm getting out of here as fast as I can, but it's not a tumor. Right? Trying to was... sneak that in there. Big out. W e f u n k. We funk. <laughs> <laughs>